The Dralkus captain slammed his hands against the console, his luminous skin pulsing a dull crimson. The holographic battlefield displayed his fleet, sleek crescent-shaped ships moving in formation around the orbital ring. At the center of the ring hung Haven, a human colony world, an unremarkable speck in the galactic expanse. Explain why they haven't surrendered yet, the captain growled. The tactical officer, a wiry creature with translucent scales, hesitated. Humans. They're using some kind of, well, distraction tactics. It's difficult to predict their movements. <laughs> distraction tactics? This is war, not one of their crude arena sports. The captain's tendrils curled. Across the void, on the battered human freighter Cobbler, Commander Davis gripped the back of his pilot's chair. His eyes darted across the cluttered navigation display. They've got us boxed in, Davis muttered. Ideas? Beside him, Lieutenant Diaz snorted. Ideas? Sure. Good ones? That's harder. The ship jolted as another volley from the draw kiss fleet clipped their starboard shields. Warning lights flashed red across the cabin. Shields at 20%, commanded Harris, the engineer, his hands flying over a set of makeshift controls. Diaz's status on the decoys? Too still active, Diaz replied, her fingers dancing across her console, but they're catching on fast. Let them, Davis said, his lips curling into a tight grin. They think we're running out of tricks. Outside, the decoys, journey-rigged drones with reflective plating, spun erratically, broadcasting distorted signals. The Drelkis fleet focused fire on them, their strikes carving through the decoy's defenses. Decoy 1's toast, Diaz said. Decoy 2's got maybe 30 seconds. Perfect, Davis said. On my mark, full burn to vector 93A. I, I'll take us right past their flanking ships, Harris protested. Exactly. We'll look like we're desperate. The crew exchanged glances, but didn't argue. Rourke's gambles had saved their skins more times than they cared to count. Mark! The cobbler surged forward, its aging thrusters roaring as it veered toward the draw kiss flank. Two enemy interceptors peeled off to pursue, their sleek forms cutting through the darkness. David's ready the net launcher, Davis ordered. Net launcher? You're kidding! Do I look like I'm kidding? Diaz grinned despite herself activating the ancient fishing gear. The cobbler shuddered as the interceptors closed in, their weapons glowing with deadly energy. N the ship's aft compartment burst open, releasing a magnetic net into space. The lead interceptor plowed into it at full speed, its hull screeching as the net's tendrils wrapped around it. The second interceptor swerved too late and collided with its ensnared ally. Both ships spiraled into the void. Worked, Harris said, blinking. Don't act so surprised, Davis replied. Diaz, what's our exit status? It great. Their main fleet's closing in. They're not buying the decoys anymore. Davis frowned, his mind racing. The orbital ring was their only chance, but it was swarming with enemy ships. Then we give them something they can't ignore, he said. And that would be? Diaz asked. The cabin fell silent. You want us to what? Harris finally said. Fly straight into their command ship, Davis said. They'll either pull everything to stop us, or... Or we die horribly, Diaz finished. Exactly. Harris groaned. I miss the days when humans weren't the galaxy's punching bag. Focus, Davis said, his tone firm. Diaz, plot a course. Harris, get the shock torpedo ready. The shock torpedo? That thing's held together with duct tape and prayers, Harris said. Then pray harder. The cobbler swung toward the Dralkis flagship, its thrusters roaring, 
On board, the crew braced themselves, adrenaline coursing through their veins. This is insane, Diaz muttered, her hands steady despite her words. Insanity's gotten us this far, Davis replied. As the cobbler hurtled toward the enemy fleet, the Dralkis captain's tendrils flared in alarm. Focus fire on that vessel, he bellowed. The Dralkis fleet unleashed a barrage of energy blasts, but the cobbler weaved through the onslaught, its aging frame groaning under the strain. Shields at ten percent, Harris shouted. Almost there, Davis said. The enemy flagship loomed ahead, its weapons charging for a final strike. Emp ready, Harris called. The cobbler unleashed a blinding pulse of electromagnetic energy, the blast washing over the flagship and its escorts. Systems flickered and died as the ships went dark, their formations collapsing. That's our cue, Davis said. Get us to the orbital ring, now. Diaz pushed the thrusters to their limits, the cobbler darting through the chaos. Behind them, the Draukis ships floundered, their precision reduced to panicked, disorganized fire. We're clear, Diaz said. Davis exhaled, a small smile breaking through his usual stern demeanor. A problem down, he said. Now we just have to survive the next dozen. The cobbler limped toward the orbital ring, its hull scorched and shields flickering. Davis scanned the console, jaw tightening at the sight of enemy ships rallying in the distance. The shock torpedo had bought them time, but not much. Status? He commanded. Shields are toast, Harris replied. Engines running hot and we're down to half our thruster capacity. That's half more than we need. Davis said. Diaz, bring us around the ring's shadow. Use it as cover. Already on it, Diaz replied, her hands steady on the controls. The cobbler dipped low, skimming the surface of the massive structure. The orbital ring was a sprawling lattice of industrial platforms and docking bays, bristling with automated defenses. Defenses that were conspicuously offline. Still no response from the colony? Davis asked, his frustration bleeding through. <laughs> Nothing, Harris said. Either they are scared stiff, or the Dralkis hit their comms hard. Davis frowned. Scared doesn't cut it. Humans don't just sit quiet while their world burns. Maybe this time they are, Diaz muttered. Or maybe they're waiting for a signal, Davis said. His fingers danced across the console, activating the comms. This is Commander Davis of the Cobbler. Any human forces in the area respond. We've got an opening, but it won't last long. Static filled the cabin. Then, a voice crackled through. Roark! This is Captain Mason, Orbital Defense. Thought you were dead. No yet, Davis said, relief tempered by urgency. What's your status? Bad. The Drakis hit us hard. Most of the fleet's down. We've got a skeleton crew and a handful of fighters, but we've been hiding in the ring's blind spots. Couldn't risk exposing ourselves. You can now, Davis said. We just scrambled their flagship. Their fleet's in disarray, but it won't last. If you've got anything that flies, now's the time to use it. A pause. Then, Mason's voice hardened. Copy that. We'll regroup and hit them from the ring's defense platforms. What about you? We'll keep them distracted, Davis said. Just make it count. Understood. Mason out. Davis turned to his crew. Looks like we're back to being bait. Diaz rolled her eyes. Because that worked so well last time. Quit whining and get us moving, Davis said. Harris... What can we rig from the cargo bay? I need something loud and obnoxious. Loud and obnoxious? That's my specialty, Harris said. He disappeared into the back, muttering about jury-rigged explosives. Incoming, Diaz shouted, snapping Rourke's attention back to the console. 
a trio of Dralkis fighters broke off from the main fleet, arcing toward them with predatory precision. They're not wasting time, Davis said. Diaz, evasive maneuvers keep them on us, but don't get us killed. The cobbler swerved sharply, its thrusters sputtering as it dodged the incoming fire. Energy bolts streaked past, illuminating the ring's skeletal framework in brief, violent flashes. Oh, I promise you I'll get it. Good thing we're not much, Davis replied, gripping his seat as the ship banked hard. Harris, I hope you've got something ugly back there. Harris reappeared, lugging a jury-rigged contraption that looked like a cross between a bomb and a garbage compactor. Meet the junk bucket. Magnetic shrapnel grenade. Stick it to a wall, and it turns into a cloud of bad decisions. Perfect, Davis said. Diaz, head for the maintenance tunnels. Harris, get that thing ready to drop. The cobbler dived into the orbital ring's inner structure, weaving through the narrow maintenance corridors. The pursuing fighters followed, their energy blasts carving gouges into the metal walls. Keep it tight, Davis said. Harris, on my mark. The cobbler rounded a sharp bend, its engines straining. The fighters surged after it, their sleek forms barely fitting through the tight space. Now, Davis shouted. Harris hit the release, and the junk bucket tumbled out of the cargo bay, embedding itself in the corridor wall. A moment later, it detonated, releasing a wave of magnetic shrapnel. The first fighter plowed into the debris cloud, its engine sparking before it slammed into the wall. The second swerved too late, its wing clipped by a jagged shard. The third managed to pull up, but its pursuit faltered. Two down, one to go, Diaz said. Don't get cocky, Davis said. That last one's not giving up. The remaining fighter pressed on, its weapons firing. The cobbler shook under the impact, panels sparking as systems failed. Shields are gone, Harris shouted. Hull integrity at 60%. Diaz, take us up, Davis said. We're done playing nice. The cobbler shot upward, emerging from the ring's shadow. The lone fighter followed, its weapons glowing ominously. Target their own minds, Davis ordered, his eyes locked on the display. You're insane, Diaz muttered. But she complied, angling the ship toward a cluster of Dralkis mines orbiting the ring. The mines were dormant, designed to activate against larger targets. But Davis wasn't aiming for a direct hit. Loose, sir, he murmured. The fighter closed in, its weapons primed for a killing shot. <laughs> now! <laughs> Davis shouted. Diaz fired the rear thrusters, the cobbler lurching forward as the fighter's blasts sailed past and struck the nearest mine. The explosion rippled outward, triggering a chain reaction. The pursuing fighter disintegrated in a blaze of light. Scratch one more, Diaz said, exhaling sharply. Nice shooting, Davis said. Now, let's get back to making noise. Mason's counting on us. As the cobbler veered back toward the ring, Davis glanced at the console. The Drawkiss fleet was regrouping, their formation tightening. We've got their attention, he muttered. Now, let's see if Mason can deliver. The cobbler skimmed along the surface of the orbital ring, its engines sputtering as the battered freighter pushed itself beyond its limits. Inside, the air was thick with tension. Mason's squadron is deploying, Diaz reported. Looks like they've got a few fighters and... Wait, is that a gunship? Davis allowed himself a small smile. Guess the orbital defense still has some teeth. Let's give them a reason to use them. Behind them... The Dralkis fleet was closing in, their flagship flickering back online. The shock torpedo had been a setback, but their recovery was swift. Too swift. <laughs> How long do you think we've got before they pin us down? Harris asked, his tone grim as he patched another sparking console. Long enough, Davis said. Diaz, bring us around the ring's primary reactor. 
Let's see if we can make them nervous. Nervous? They've got a fleet. And we've got... Diaz gestured to the rattling control panel. This. Exactly. They'll wonder what we're up to. Diaz sighed, but didn't argue, guiding the cobbler toward the massive structure at the center of the ring. The reactor was a hulking cylinder, its surface glowing faintly with the energy that powered the colony below. Mason's on the comms, Harris said, patching him through. Rourke, you're insane, Mason's voice crackled over the speakers. You're leading them straight to the colony's power core. That's the idea, Davis said. You in position? Almost, Mason replied. We've got three fighters and one barely functioning gunship. If you're expecting miracles, you'll have to work for it. Good thing that's what we're good at, Davis said. We'll keep them busy. You hit their rear flank when they least expect it. Copy that. Good luck, Rourke. You're gonna need it. The comms went silent as the cobbler arced around the reactor, its engines sputtering under the strain. The Dralkis fleet closed in, their sleek ships forming a tight formation. They're not taking the bait, Diaz said. They're staying at range. Then we make them come to us, Davis said. He turned to Harris. Do we still have that mining charge? Harris blinked. The one meant for asteroid cores? Yeah, but it's not exactly subtle. Perfect, Davis said. Diaz, bring us in close to the reactor. Harris, rig the charge to detonate remotely. You want to blow up the reactor? Diaz's voice rose. That'll take the colony with it. Not the whole reactor, Davis said. Just enough to send a message. The message being, we're crazy, Harris muttered but set to work. The cobbler slowed as it approached the reactor, its hull barely meters from the glowing surface. Behind them, the Dralkis ships hesitated, their formation faltering. They're holding back, Diaz said, probably trying to figure out if we're suicidal. Let's give them a reason to decide, Davis said. Harris, drop the charge. The mining charge deployed, a small device barely visible against the reactor's vast expanse. Harris keyed in the remote detonator, his hands shaking slightly. Charge is live, he said. But if this thing goes wrong... It won't, Davis interrupted. Diaz, take us out of here nice and slow. Let him see us run. The cobbler edged away from the reactor, its thrusters barely functional. The Dralkis fleet hesitated for a moment longer, then surged forward. They're taking the bait, Diaz said, but they're not stupid. They're staying in formation. Stupid's not what we're counting on, Davis said. He waited until the first wave of Dralkis ships reached the reactor's edge. Now! Harris hit the detonator, and the mining charge exploded in a brilliant flash. The reactor shuddered, releasing a massive shockwave of energy that rippled outward. The Dralkis ships nearest to the blast were thrown off course, their shields flaring and engines sputtering. Direct hit, Diaz shouted. Their formation's breaking. Good, Davis said. Mason, now's your chance. The comms crackled as Mason's squadron emerged from the ring's shadow, their ships blazing toward the disoriented Dralkis fleet. The gunship unleashed a volley of missiles tearing through the enemy's rear flank. Mason's fighters followed, weaving through the chaos and picking off targets with ruthless efficiency. They're scattering, Diaz said. Not for long, Davis said, his eyes fixed on the flagship. The massive ship was recovering, its weapons charging for a devastating strike. Diaz, get us close to their flagship, Davis ordered. Harris, prep the shock torpedo for one last shot. The shock torpedo? That thing's barely holding together, Harris protested. Then it's a perfect match for us, Davis said. Do it. The cobbler veered toward the flagship, its engines groaning in protest. The enemy ship loomed ahead, its massive guns locking onto Mason's squadron. Almost there, Diaz muttered, sweat dripping down her temple. The cobbler closed the distance, the flagship's weapons glowing ominously. At the last moment, Davis shouted, Now! 
Harris activated the shock torpedo, and the cobbler unleashed its final burst of energy. The flagship's systems flickered and died, its weapons falling silent. Mason's gunship seized the opportunity, firing a concentrated barrage that ripped through the flagship's hull. Direct hit, Diaz shouted. The flagship's going down. The Dralkis fleet faltered, their formations collapsing without the flagship's command. One by one they broke off, retreating into the void. They're running, Harris said. We actually did it. Davis leaned back in his seat, exhaustion washing over him. We did it because we didn't stop. The crew exchanged tired but triumphant smiles as the cobbler limped back toward the orbital ring. Below, the colony's lights flickered back on, a beacon of human resilience shining against the darkness.